Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Donkey Kong Country at Vulture Culture. Before I talk about the history of Donkey Kong again, because I'm going to put it off, I just want to talk about the fact that I absolutely love the music in this set of stages in this game. This is actually my favorite music in all the, the whole game. It's from this set of stages. And yeah, like this one too. I just And I love the look of it too. I love forests. Uh, forests are my favorite piece of nature over everything else. So yeah, I just, I don't know, I just love it. And I love these these levels, I love the music in these levels, and it just really makes me happy. So yeah, just just random aside, just, I wanted to talk about just because, I don't know, just being in these stages makes me super happy. Even though people hate these stages because these stages are, are really hard, and this is when it especially ramps up in difficulty. I like it, man. I like it, and I don't care. All right, so last time I was talking about Radar Scope and how... Minoru Arakawa looked at Radar Scope as being the... And I just I didn't realize there was a secret up here, but I found one. That's good. Minoru Arakawa thought maybe Radar Scope would be the thing to make Nintendo of America hit. And at the time, Nintendo of America, if I remember correctly, was situated in New York City. And he was like, okay, let's ship over a Radar Scope. Let's, let's do Radar Scope and use that. And... They got Radar Scope in, and by the time Radar Scope finally made its way from Japan to America and like was shipped, and I think they had to ship it to New York City as well at this point. Although I could be mistaken, he could have moved to Seattle already at this point. But I've, I've kind of got my timeline a little bit um, like not fully memorized. But regardless, he looked at Radar Scope and was like, "This is going to be it." And by the time it finally got to them, Radar Scope wasn't a thing anymore. People just didn't care about it anymore, and it was too late. And the game didn't do well at all. Like, it hardly sold through, wasn't doing well. So he hit up Nintendo Japan, was like, look, this is what happened, I'm sorry. And Hiroshi Yamauchi was like, don't worry about it, let's figure something out. And what they decided was, it, Radar Scope was especially expensive because it used a special type of TV. I think maybe two TVs, but its, it's setup was... A special type of way that was different from other games so you can just put another game in the arcade cabinet because it was different uh, in the way that it worked so they needed to find something special to do and um, they basically had to make a fully a new game to work within the radar scope cabinet so that's where enter Shigeru Miyamoto so Shigeru Miyamoto at the time actually hadn't done anything for Nintendo yet Oh, that's right. You best thing to do with these guys is only hit one at a time because the one that you hit goes faster and faster. And if you hit them both, they both get kind of like unwieldy for how fast they are. So yeah, just do one at a time. That's the way to take care of these guys. But yeah, so Shigeru Miyamoto was just an artist for them, and he wasn't really doing much yet. And they were finally like, okay, oh, oh my god, I can't believe I failed there. I'm actually really pissed at myself for that. Oh, man. Stupid. This Nintendo story is ruining me. I haven't been able to do it properly. I've been failing at everything. It's ruining me. Anyways, Shigeru Miyamoto, like I said, he, he'd been hired, but he hadn't really done much for them yet. And finally, Shigeru Miyamoto was like, all right, uh, not Shigeru Miyamoto. Hiroshi Yamauchi was like, okay, we have all of our other major people, like Gunpei Yokoi and all the other heavy hitters at Nintendo at the time were busy doing things. And he didn't think it was that important. He was like, eh, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that important. Uh, let's, we'll give Shigeru Miyamoto a try. So they put Shigeru Miyamoto on it to try uh, to see if he could salvage Radar Scope. So Shigeru Miyamoto was trying to come up with stuff to do. And what he decided was that he was tired of all the shooting games at the time. He was like, man, all these games are just shooter games. I want to do something different. And what he came up with was Donkey Kong. And there we go. So many secrets. Ah, oh, what the fuck? What? That is some bullshit. You vulture culture. What the hell? More like bullshit culture. That's all I gotta say. I'm kind of pissed about that. No, just slightly. Just slightly. So, a lot of things from Donkey Kong, Con Donkey Kong, the original, came from the limitations of the era. 
But he basically like Mario, and this is where, or Jumpman at the time, is this is where he came from, was from Donkey Kong Country. Or to, from, uh, sorry, from Donkey Kong. And basically, like, all the things in the way that Mario looks were in order to accommodate for the fact that it was hard to see graphics at the time. Like, he ended up having a... Uh, the reason that he had a hat was because it was hard to animate hair. The reason he was given a mustache was because, was just to make it so he was easier to see. Come on. Now don't screw up on me. And yeah, that was the idea. And the name Donkey Kong actually came from... Uh, he was tr Shigeru Miyamoto was trying to think of a way to say, I think, Stupid Monkey? Something like that. And, and he just thought Kong was a way to say Monkey. And this is going to actually be really important in a moment here, as we talk about the history of the game the, the game and Nintendo. But the name is incredibly important here. So he basically thought Kong was a, an American way to say Monkey. And that's why he used the word Kong. And he just thought like Donkey was like Stupid Monkey. And that's where Donkey came from. So, that's where the name came from, and yeah, so... Oh, damn it! I thought I thought maybe that would work. <laughs> I guess not. I got, maybe I gotta find one that jumps or something. Oh, here we go. That's how we do it. Get a vulture. Sorry, I gotta focus right now on the play. Gotta get my head in the game, so I keep on fucking up at these mini-games. Okay, so let's let's just go down history road and we'll get to the name. But yeah, so they shipped King the finished Donkey Kong to the States, and when the people who work for Nintendo of America first popped it in, most of them thought it was horrible. And one of them even like was just like practically ready to quit on the spot. He was like, My we're that's it. We're done. Nintendo's over. It's all over now. And as they were they were trying to like switch it over and Americanize it because the guy was just named Jumpman. The guy who owned the warehouses, and they were in Seattle at this point. I can't believe I missed that jump. Nintendo was in Seattle at this point because I think around this time, because of how badly Radar Scope did because of switching things and how long it took, Minoru Arakawa decided to move Nintendo of America to Seattle. So the warehouse manager's name was Mario Sagali. And. Uh, they just kind of decided to name Mario after Mario Sagali. And apparently he's, he was pissed off about it when he later found out and thought, just not mad because of it, but he thought he should have been given money and he didn't give, it, get, give money for it. So he was pissed off because he was like, ah, they should have given me the money for it. I deserve money. But uh, yeah, so they did that and they ended up putting it into a sample arcade in Seattle. And when they came back, it made a shitload of money. And they were kind of like, whoa, what? And apparently people were just playing it nonstop. And it ended up being a huge, huge success. Like, crazy successful. Oh, I forgot that that was going to be an auto-shoot one when I jumped in. I was just kind of just jumping in because I was playing without thinking. But it ended up being crazy successful for Nintendo of America. And a huge hit. And completely saved the company. Which I guess you could say about Donkey Kong Country 2 for the Super Nintendo in the United States. Which is like, Donkey Kong actually just ended up being a savior a lot of times for the company. But this was the first time. So, okay, we're gonna go for this banana here. Yep, secret. So at least that one was a legit secret where they, they kind of, secret, secret. Where the game actually indicated that there'd be something there. But yeah, so anyways, the game just had this history where it, it completely saved Nintendo. And... Fuck. Fuck. But then, because of the name, there's Universal Studios, or Universal, the, the then head of Universal Studios, um, was like looking at their properties and they were like, wait a second, Donkey Kong, that sounds like King Kong. We must own this. So they decided that Nintendo was infringing on their copyright for King Kong by using the name Donkey Kong. Even though the game was completely different, they're like, this is obviously our copyright. You guys are taking our copyright. 
And this was the head of one of the heads of Universal Studios at the time. So he threatened to sue Nintendo if they didn't settle. And they were like, we're going to we're going to sue you. We're going to take all the money that you made for Donkey Kong Country. You need to settle. So Howard Lincoln, that's the name of the lawyer I couldn't remember before, Howard Lincoln. Um, they were basically like, oh crap, what are we, we going to do? What are we going to do? And Minoru Arakawa was freaking out. And Howard Lincoln kind of looked into it a little bit and was like, you know what? Let's, uh, let's, let's have a talk with them, basically. And they flew out to Universal Studios, and they had like a special meeting with the head of Universal where he like treated them to a nice dinner and like the executive dining suite and all that as they talked. And it, Howard Lincoln goes straight to his face, to his face, and goes, yeah, we're not gonna settle. I'll see you in court. F pissing the hell off of the, the head of Universal Studios. Which is like, what the hell? Why did you, why did you come all the way out here just to say that? And Howard Lincoln goes, I just wanted to say it to your face. So... Flew all the way out just to tell them that. And they ended up hiring a, a lawyer to help them out. John Kirby, or Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby, to help them out with it. With the case. And, uh, I, th I guess I could have gotten a frog somehow in this level. So, yeah, so anyways. They went to court over it. And basically what they were able to prove with King Kong and with Donkey Kong was, first of all... Not only, not only was it not copyright infringement, which they were able to prove to the courts, but not only that, Universal Studios actually didn't even own the copyrights to King Kong. And they had gone to court themselves because of King Kong to prove that they could use King Kong. So they had, and that it was in the public domain. So they themselves had proved at one point that King Kong was in the public domain and that they could use it for King Kong the movie. So... It was just like this, uh, to me it's like a hilarious case, but that's just like, so sometimes when you're sued for something, it's not actually a good valid case, is really what that shows. And just, yeah, sometimes people just swing in their money, or like, for that case, it was really just Universal Studios just wanted the money. They saw the success, and this is obviously what it was, was they saw the success of Donkey Kong and they wanted a piece of the action. So, because as a result of it though, um, Kirby was actually named after Jack Kirby, and it wasn't necessarily a direct thing from when I was looking into it. Basically, they were trying to decide on what to name Kirby, because originally it was this really Japanese name, like Poto Poto Poco Poco or something like that. It was just super Japanese, and they wanted to bring it to the States, and they were trying to figure out what names to use. And one of the recommendations that came to them was Kirby, based off of Jack Kirby, just because he was an important figure for Nintendo of America. But they also gifted him, as a result of it, a boat. Like, I think a yacht that they named Donkey Kong was the name of the boat. As a result of him helping them win the case. But, I mean, Donkey Kong made so much money. The original Donkey Kong for Nintendo. Like, hand over fist money. So, I mean, Nintendo had the money at that point to give them. Because of how much money he saved them for this lawsuit from losing. But yeah, so Donkey Kong really saved Nintendo of America at the time. Like, it's what made Nintendo of America successful. And, uh, yeah, ended up just being this major, major factor in the history of Nintendo. Oh, I guess I gotta go further here. One of these is gonna be a secret. They didn't give me this barrel for nothing. Oh my god. Is it really gonna be all the way down here? It is! Alright, cool. They made you work for that secret. I have, oh, I've, we haven't done one of these ones yet. I guess I just gotta find the spot to get two at once. Nice. I am good at this. Oh, nope, I'm not. <laughs> oh no, I just goofed up, I goofed up. I'm sure you don't need every banana to win this one, but let's do it anyways. So there you go, I think that's all the points I wanted to talk about with the history of Donkey Kong, and I wanted to hit on. Um, but yeah, the, and like I said, the name King Kong and Donkey Kong, that would end up becoming really important. So guys, now that I've finished Force Frenzy, let's go ahead and wrap up this Let's Play. Thank you guys so much for watching. I, as always, I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for your time, and I hope you enjoyed, as I finally got out the story of the history of Donkey Kong. So, 
Uh, next episode, we'll just talk more about Donkey Kong Country itself as I go through Donkey Kong Country. Thanks, guys, so much for watching. See you guys next time. Later, guys. Peace.